I want to get you live out to the house right now where our Alex Capriolo is standing by. He's been reporting all week from there. So, Alex, when we came to you last night, there was like a bit of a, a flurry of activity and they were moving police vehicles and it looked like they might be starting to, you know, bring things out but block the press, you know, the view. What's the change today? What are you seeing now? And is there any end in sight to this meticulous search of the house? Well, the change right now, Ashley, is no change. In fact, most of these police vehicles are exactly as they were left last night. We saw them sort of jockey for position, sort of realign themselves. In our opinion, it looked as a way to sort of add more privacy to the situation, block the public, the reporters, the photographers uh, from seeing what exactly it was that they were doing. As you've pointed out, we know a lot more because of these wonderful cameras that are out here now and that are able to get some really clear images of these notes that are here uh, based from the investigative reports. But at this time, we can't see much of that at all. We had a great view for most of the week, but at this point, a lot of it's blocked. And I'm hearing lots of noise in the background, although it's dark behind you, but I am curious, um, and that's Greg McCrary, but we're gonna go back to Alex Capriolo for a minute live outside the house. Uh, I'm curious about all of the neighbors and the tourists and i mean we've seen dozens upon dozens of people who are just kind of gawking at this spectacle and right. make no mistake it's a live spectacle it's still happening there's a police presence there's you know crime tape there's movement there's stuff being removed there's stuff being loaded into vehicles and driven away so what's the status of that now are people petering out or are they still coming in droves it's not nearly the same scene as it was earlier this week. I mean, it was still very fresh on, say, Monday, Tuesday. Don't get me wrong, this is still very much um, something that people want to see. A lot of neighbors, a lot of people from Long Island, New York, they all want to come out here and get a glimpse themselves. In fact, I have a sneaking suspicion they know exactly when our newscasts are because a lot of the times, five minutes before a newscast begins, we see a large group of people come out here. Uh, I would say upwards of about 20 here right now. Uh, but really, it's mostly about understanding this story more rather than seeing us out here doing our reports. They want to know what the latest is in this investigation. They want to hear about what's going on with Rex Hewerman now that he's in jail uh, with the latest in the investigative process. But yes, still very much uh, a very busy scene out here beyond just the news reporters. You know, Alex, um, gosh, 20 Two years ago, uh, when 9-11 happened, I remember getting a real familiar feel for communities in Long Island that uh, had heavy concentrations of police and firefighters because so many communities lost so many police and firefighters. Wow. And Massapequa Park, for whatever reason, is one of those communities that has a very dense concentration of police officers and firefighters. And I can only imagine how many of them are feeling if this guy is the Long Island serial killer, that he was living literally cheek to jowl right under their noses. Yeah, and honestly, from a personal perspective, uh, it means a lot to us, my family as well. I have uh, uncles and aunts that are part of NYPD, FDNY. Um, and so the law enforcement community is a huge part of New York and a part of Long Island. And I would say that's what I'm hearing from these neighbors here, there's a great deal of respect for the investigators that are right here behind us, working day in and day out, uh, trying to uncover every single detail at this house. When you drive by, uh, there's police barriers everywhere, but you'll see neighbors stopping and talking, offering a cup of coffee, water, food to the police officers that are here. So I think it goes beyond just respect. It's admiration, but also, yes, I think a little bit of confusion uh, as to how something like this might happen so close to so many people. In fact, uh, the next door neighbor right here, Etienne, he tells me he was retired FDNY. He saw Rex Hurman probably closer than anybody else here. And so uh, definitely um, that is a great point that you make here. And I think it's something that they're all trying to work through together. You know, it's interesting. I, I was also talking to a, a former resident of Massapequa Park who grew up there, a colleague of mine, and he said, if you think about it, Billy Baldwin is also from there. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld is from there. Uh, Dee Snyder is from there. Jessica Hahn is from there. There's like a lot of celebrities who are from that, that community as well. So there's a lot of lore. Um, sadly, this will be part of it as well. Alex Capriola, I'm going to let you stop down for a, for a hot minute, but I do know that you've got an incredible feature for us coming up because just three miles away from you is the the house where the Amityville horror took place. And that 
became a, a subject of you know crime tourism and lore as well. So you're going to give us that tour in a moment. Thank you for this, though. I appreciate it. And break in at any moment if there's movement, Alex. we Will do, Ashley. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.